Our guest today always gets people talking about everything from whether women are bad drivers to whether brand names are better. He takes on these questions and a lot more in his new book called Myths, Lies, and Downright Stupidity. Get the shovel out. Your first book, the bestseller, Give Me a Break, is sort of about breaking down a lot of these myths. How does this progress out of that first book? Well, that was mostly politics, how I came from bashing business to seeing that the government rules to fix it were making things worse. This broadens it out to some of the work by our colleagues on health, consumer, parenting. The idea that men are better drivers than women, why is that myth so prevailing? Maybe because we men seem more confident than you women. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure, but it's just not true. Men have many more accidents than women. Men are more likely to be killed driving and to kill other people. Now, you could say, well, that's just because men drive more. But even when you control for that, our testosterone makes us worse. And there are headlines out there like bad driving linked to hormones, et cetera, et cetera. Well, the media, I have a chapter on the clueless media in there, too. We get a lot of stuff wrong. You bash even your colleagues, I'm sure. Um, the idea, too, uh, in here about price gouging, which I think is pretty topical right now, given everybody's in an uproar about gas prices, and even the Bush administration, which has always been an opponent of going after price gougers, said, we're going to go after price gougers. Isn't that a good thing? No, it's a terrible thing. It really hurts people. And I know Pete, you're going to hate me for trying to argue this, and I, I get never horrible hate, hate mail. Argument on this, but price gouging is good. All price gouging, and first of all, who decides what's gouging? Is a 10% increase? Everybody wants profit. Some politician is going to decide what the profit is. Isn't profiteering evil? Well, what's profiteering? Same question. Isn't your salary, my salary? We could say that's profiteering. Everybody wants as much as they can get, and the market makes sure that nobody can get more than they deserve because there's competition. John, I guarantee if you, my profiteering is vastly different than your profiteering. <laughs> good. <laughs> But the point is, in the case of oil prices, the high prices are what make oil companies say, ooh, greedy, let's make even more money, we'll drill for more oil, and that brings prices down. Politicians, moronic politicians, including the Republicans who are running around saying, oh yes, we got to cap prices, Richard Nixon was the first to do that. It was a horrible failure, we had long gas lines and we had less oil. Sending prices up is a signal to increase supplies, that's supply and demand, it works. We have a piece on Friday in the special about this, about the Myths book that uh, chronicles a guy who drove from Kentucky to Mississippi with generators in his truck because people had no power. They were excited to buy his generators. He was, wanted to sell them for twice what he'd paid for them. They locked him up for four days. They still have his generators locked up. This is a typical political response. It's profiteering. It's too much. You often go after politicians. One of the myths in here is Republicans shrink government. That's what they campaign on. How could that not be true? Well, they say they will, and then they don't do it. And the current crop has increased the size of the state even faster than the Democrats did. John loves to talk about bridges to nowhere, bridges to nowhere. What does he mean by that? Well, it's one of the piggish things the Republicans did. The Don Young, the congressman from Alaska who used to criticize the Democrats for overspending, now that he's in power, he's spending hundreds of millions of your tax dollars on bridges that go to, for example, a little island where about 50 people live. But isn't that what representative government is about? You're supposed to fight for the little guy, no? And get money, jobs, pork barrel, whatever, home for the constituents. Well, no, on two points. You're supposed to fight for the national interest. And this conceit that you'll create jobs with the project is distortion. Because, yes, it'll create a few jobs for the construction workers and for some people on the island. But by taking the money from everybody else, that destroys jobs. Tell me a little bit about the process of writing this book. It sort of became an organic growth out of some of the pieces that you were doing, right? Yes, I keep researching things and finding out that what I thought was true was bunk, bull. That's why there's a shovel on the cover of the Myths book, because we kept shoveling the stuff away. So I then stole from <laughs> you and other people around 2020. That's very generous of their you to say, research John. and put it together in this book. Isn't fast food a universal evil? Well, food is food. It has a lot of garbage in it, a lot of salt and a lot of fat. But this guy who did the Super Size Me movie, had he gone to fancy French restaurants and ate nothing but that, would have gotten just as fat. Interesting. All right. Well, you got in a lot of hot water um, over the teacher's stupid schools, I believe was the, the premise. Isn't this myth a truism that 
teachers are underpaid? Well, under what? In, in a free society, the way you tell if people are underpaid is when nobody's applying for the job. But there's huge demand for teaching jobs. In New York, five people apply for every one job. Chicago, six to one. Some places, 10, 20 to one. Teachers make $7,000 more than the average income. There were a lot of protesters who were arguing that your points were skewed and you, didn't, you, you weren't fair to their position. Well, that was the union. Yes, 500 union members did show up at our doorstep screaming at us. And that was because I said that the union encouraged mediocrity. And the union does. When you pay everyone the same and you can't fire the bad apples, that encourages mediocrity. But isn't there an argument to be made that if you pay teachers overall a lot more money, then you will attract more of the brightest and the best and brightest and they wouldn't go off into more lucrative careers? That's true. And if the money's there, I'm all for that. Pay everybody more. But just remember, teachers get the summer off, and if you compare it by hour, they make a lot more than psychologists, architects, statisticians, make a lot more than lots of people. And spending more in schools doesn't mean it gets to the teachers, because they're spending over $200,000 per classroom now. That is very Where true. Where is it going? Right, and, and comparatively, in other countries, they spend less and get better test scores. I know we sound like we're jumping around a lot, but that's the beauty of this book, is that you cover so much ground. Speaking of ground, when it's covered with hot coals, doesn't that burn your feet when you walk across? The myth is if you concentrate your mind, you can walk on hot coals without fear. What's the truth? It's fun to debunk these mysticists who say, oh, if you meditate, if you follow my God, you'll have all these wonderful powers. And some of them demonstrate their wonderful powers. Look, by there you are. Walking on hot coals, but we show that anybody can do it if you just keep moving, because coals don't conduct heat that well. And you didn't meditate to some sun god when you were doing this? It's not about the sun god. Mm -hmm. Something about wood is not a good thermal conductor or something? There you go. See, I read your book. Um, the myth is boys won't talk about their feelings. I've heard that universally. Isn't that the case? It is largely true, but what the psychologist showed us was that if you play a game with a boy, that girls come home and they'll say, oh, mommy, this happened the day, and then Susie said this, and she hurt my feelings, and the boy will say, nothing, fine. But if, and I found this with my son, if you, uh, can you catch, if you start playing a game here with a, with a boy? Well, I can't catch that, I didn't throw it well. <laughs> if you play catch, they if you really? Do, if you play a game with your kid, and right. I do this with my son, and he'll talk. He, really? And now when I come in the room, he throws the pen at me. And we. And that's his way of automatic. saying, Dad, I had a rough day? Yeah, <laughs> and we talk about it. Oh, that's very interesting. I, because boys and girls definitely think differently and behave differently. There was another one of those myths, a gender myth, about how men or women are not that different after all. That was the myth. Well, I was taught that in college. It was just socialization. That, uh, and, and, and there's a lot. I, mean, I changed he's to she's in my daughter's books because all the big action characters, even in Dr. Seuss, Sesame Street, they're all boys. And I believe that it was this male influence that made boys aggressive and girls shyer. But there really are differences. Are there universal truths that you got out of this book, the idea that conventional wisdom needs to be poked at every once in a while? A few, that reporters are clueless about economics and science, and you can't trust what we tell you about economics and science. Um, Is that because we're all liberal arts majors time. and we weren't engineers for That's, reasons? And the people who are scientists tend not to go into journalism. And that a lot of what is instinctive instinct is wrong. What's instinct about economics is wrong. The idea that a minimum wage should be higher to help poor people sounds good and we want, we want them to make more. But raising the minimum wage hurts people. It's counterintuitive. The idea that parenting is instinctive is wrong because it's instinctive to say, no, stop that, don't do that, to pay attention to what's wrong. It's much better parenting to compliment the good, to catch your kid doing something right. And what about the pursuit of happiness? That's what we're here for and people think Money will do it. It turns out money will do it if you're very poor. But beyond subsistence level, extra money doesn't help. The lottery winners are no happier a year later. And people who are disabled, who lose sight, hearing, use of their legs, a year later they return to their same levels of happiness. Older people are no less happy. Happiness comes from not pursuing happiness or hedonism, but as an accident while doing other things. Religious people are happier. People who have a, pursue friendships are happier. John's book is called Myths, Lies, and Downright Stupidity. Thanks for watching Influentials. I'm Juju Chang in New York.